video is going to be a short recap of the fab work for folks that already know how to do this kind of stuff and didn't want to sit through and watch all the videos. Here's the top with all the fab work done. Power transformer goes over here with two grommets. Choke goes in the front, grommet in the back for the wires to go through. Then here are the two EdCore output transformers with grommets for the wires to go through with them. Here are driver tubes, power tubes, rectifier tube. So we have all the power supply over on this side. In the back, we have the power socket, IEC power socket. The speaker output jacks are going to be across here. Two RCA jacks are there. And then in the front is the volume knob. I was originally concerned that we were going to have an issue with the volume knob getting into the this front driver tube. But after doing some measuring, yes, it's close. But I was able to get it. Let me zoom in here on this. I was able to get a couple of millimeter gap here. And so realistically, you could mount this anywhere on the front panel between here and here. I wouldn't get too far over because you really don't want these input leads having to run all over the place. But the idea is going to be that the input is going to come around the shielded wire is going to come around here, go to the RCA jacks, and then run up in this corner and come over here to the volume pot. We're going to orient the tubes like this so that the with the keyways facing this way on the driver tube, so the heaters are going to be like this. And then these are also going to be mounted in this orientation, and we're going to run the driver tube heater to the power tube, and then across the face over here. These are going to be going at 90 degrees to the heater, so we shouldn't have any problem. At least my other amp that's wired the same way doesn't have any problem picking up hum from the heaters. On this side, we're going to have the power transformer, which then goes to the rectifier tube, which then goes to the choke. We're going to have the filtering caps mounted right in here. We're going to have the cathode resistors mounted in this area right here. And then the cathode bypass resistors will be mounted somewhere around in here, probably somewhere off one of the bolts for the resistors. We're going to be able to put tag strips on each one of these tube sockets as needed so that we have no bolts coming through from the top side. So I think it's going to turn out real neat. I'm going to, when I'm all done with this, I'm going to post a layout drawing that shows all of the spacings on the tubes. We basically ended up with, I believe it was 41 millimeters to the center, 41 millimeters, 41 millimeters, 41 millimeters. These were 112 millimeters from the front, and then these were 127 from this edge. And then these transformers were centered on that same 127 millimeters. And this was just kind of put over in the corner, and this was in this corner. Obviously, most of this stuff, it's not super critical where it goes, except this tube. This has to be 41 millimeters to get that clearance we needed for this volume pot. So that's really the only real critical one, is make sure the center of this socket is 41 millimeters minimum from this front edge. So anyway, that's the TLDR layout. I was going to also go over real quickly about installing these little dress-up tube rings that we're going to be putting on this amp. We're going to use the smaller diameter ones on the driver tube and the larger ones for the Two, two output tubes and the rectifier 
and then another one here on the another small one for the driver tube the a little trick with these and let me zoom in here so a little trick on these the smaller ones it's no no problem the holes line up with the socket and you can just mark them and drill them what I usually do is put the socket in from the underside scribe a line that's in the center of each of these so I make sure they're 180 degrees apart then I get this measurement like that and then scribe them like that on the underside then drill the holes on these larger ones you can see with the with the stock tube socket the holes don't line up so what you have to do is get a uh, dribble tool and slot the holes out on the ends and I, sl I usually slot them until the screws will just go in and then I can use that as a reference on where to drill the hole in the chassis and then again put it on the underside mark those centers and then like I do with a lot of things I on my pilot hole I drill kind of a little cone mark and then double check by holding the tube socket up and you see these fit real tight and so you can see if the holes are 180 degrees apart from each other and then check the measurement with this and that make sure the holes in the right place and then drill them now obviously if you are not you didn't purchase these or you don't want to use them you can mount the tube sockets from underneath just like that and put a couple of button head allen bolts on each side holding them down some people seem to like the way they look when they're mounted to the top like that honestly I think that's kind of ugly and I think if you don't use a greenly punch you may and you have an ugly looking hole then you may have to mount them from the top like that and I think most of the time well, here's one that's not been slotted out I think most of the time when I see people with a mounted on the top like this it's because they butchered the hole and that's the only choice they have so if you use a punch and you have a nice hole you can just mount them underneath like that and they look great the last thing I was gonna say is I am going to come back with some black touch-up paint and touch up where I've machined every hole, including underneath these grommets. This is a steel chassis, and it can rust. And so I'm going to paint every one of these holes so over time we don't end up with rust coming up from underneath these screw heads. So that's just another little tip. Hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, please subscribe like the video, and we'll see you soon for more 6SQ7 fun. Have a great day.